So we've done a couple of live streams and a couple of conversations. And the live streams are going to be every Saturday night, India time. That means uh, early afternoon European time and very early in the morning U.S. time. So it's going to be a regular thing every week at the same time. And I put a link in the video description below to a site that shows the world time zones and how to find the time of the live stream in your particular local area. So please don't miss and don't be late because I give a little talk in the beginning, and that talk then will be the topic for the questions. Now, you have to be a subscriber to this channel to use the chat to post a question or to have conversation by means of the comments. So do become a subscriber. That's the first time I've ever asked this. And the reason is because I don't want people, just random people joining the live stream and asking off the wall questions. I want to get the questions from people who have been subscribed to the channel for some time and have some background, some context. Maybe they've tried some of the practices or thought about some of the ideas and have, you know, real legitimate questions, not just curiosity, but questions having to do with their practice. So I want to encourage you to attend these live stream events weekly, and we may pop a couple of surprise ones in the middle of the week, but mostly during in the middle of the week, uh, I want to have conversations on Zoom or Signal and uh, I've also put my signal ID and my Zoom address to request a conversation in the video description. So you can click on those or email me. I also put my email address there and set up a time when we can get together and have a conversation. Whether or not we record and publish that is up to you. I respect your wishes for privacy. But the, four, the most important point is to get in association and to get closer and to bring people together on this channel into some kind of community. The whole point of community is that it builds energy. It builds consensus and an audience for these ideas, which are pretty innovative. You won't find these kind of teachings in any other lineage that I'm aware of. You won't find this kind of group where you can just be yourself, you know? We are completely inclusive. We don't exclude people based on their nationality or race or cultural identity or sexual identity or any uh, use of substances or whatever. We don't kick people out. It's inclusive, not exclusive. You can make it exclusive if you think, well, I don't fit, I don't belong. No, it's inclusive. Everybody fits, everybody belongs. That's the nature of the esoteric teaching. That's the nature of the Chatur Darshana, is that everyone and everything has a place in it. So don't feel excluded. Don't feel like you have to hide in a corner. Come on out and let's engage. 
I want to empower you to express yourself, to be a part of this community. I don't think of myself as a guru or even a teacher. What to speak of a leader? <laughs> what is there to lead? I'm interested in relationships, not organizations, not money, power, or even dogma, but to create a framework that is inclusive and can include everyone. This is the compassion of the mother. The universal mother, the cosmic mother, is everybody's mother. She doesn't discriminate, so why should we? So please, come on out of your shell, approach me, and let's have a conversation. Now, there is one thing you have to be mindful of, which is that my time is very limited and valuable. So don't show up late or not show up at all, because I have a limited tolerance for that sort of thing. Not that I'm going to exclude you from the community, but I might uh, drop you from the list of people that can make these conversations because I, I just don't have the time to waste. Huh? So any professional nowadays insists that you show up for appointments or they're going to charge you something. That's just the way it is. A no-show is going to waste at least 15 minutes of my time, if not more, that I set aside specifically for you. So don't take advantage of this um, because it can lead to loss of privileges. You know, that's just the way it is. It's just the way it has to be, the way the world is now. <laughs> so don't take it personally. The other thing I want to talk about is traveling. You know, I've been making a lot of noise about a trip to Europe later on in the spring of 22. And right now that's still kind of up in the air. The Indian government has told me uh, I have to leave India by the 25th of November. That's only a week away. So this week, I'm going to be very busy making arrangements for travel. We're still going to have our live stream on Saturday night. Uh, that happens with it, no matter what. <laughs> but uh, as far as other things, I may be a bit busy this week to have one-on-one -on -one conversations. But next week, once I get settled in Sri Lanka, then I'll have a lot of time for you. So please get in touch and let's schedule something. Uh, um, I'm going to Sri Lanka. At first, I'm going to be staying with some friends. Later on, I may go to some monasteries that I like. Uh, the trouble with that is that the really good monasteries are out of touch of the internet. <laughs> So we'll see how to manage that when I'm there. I may just wind up renting a, a, a room in a house somewhere and staying for a month or two or three. I'm not sure. Right now, India is only giving 30-day tourist visa. So I have a new visa. I can re-enter India anytime. But if it's only for 30 days, I don't know, you know, how much it's worth it. I can stay in Sri Lanka up to six months by extending my visa. So, you know, the visa thing, this is the curse of the expats, uh, the digital nomads. <laughs> Wherever you go, there's going to be a limit on the time you can stay. So hopefully during the next three months or so, India will open up their visa program to a longer term stay, uh, like it was before the pandemic, where you can get a five-year visa, or if I went to the US, I could even get a 10-year visa. 
And then I could stay six months at a time, no problem. So we'll see what happens. But right now, I'm just going to go to Sri Lanka and come back. Uh, I'm going to keep my house. I don't want to give up my house in Tiruvannamalai. It's the, the most home I've ever had in my life. And I feel very comfortable here. Um, of course, there are problems, there are issues, but I can deal with them. Whereas if I go traveling somewhere, something goes wrong, it could be a major problem. So until I get uh, confidence that uh, I have uh, reliable hosting and so on in, in Europe, I'm going to just stay in India or Sri Lanka. <laughs> if you want to come visit me, that's fine. Not just for a casual visit, though. I would want to have extensive conversations on uh, Signal or by email. I prefer Signal because it's interactive and we can have video and audio calls. Uh, before you come, I want to get to know you a bit and understand why you're coming, what is your purpose, what is your intention. So I do encourage serious visitors, but not casual visitors. If you just want to come, you know, spend an afternoon, have some tea and go away, I'm not really into that. Because it disturbs my creative flow, it interrupts my concentration, my meditative state. So uh, please keep that in mind. If you want to schedule a visit, that's fine. But I want to see that you're coming for the right reasons. So that, again, uh, it's not a waste of time, either for you or for me. Now, as far as the teaching goes, I've really said everything there is to say. The thing is, I don't see that people have gotten it yet. So the next phase of this channel is going to be community building to where I interact with people and I get their responses, their questions and so on, their doubts, and assist them, support them, help them to understand this teaching, which is quite new. Well, it's actually very old, but it has fallen out of use in the last couple of hundred years. Uh, so I want to revive the ancient views, the ancient ways, the ancient spiritual values, and the authentic teachings, not these narrow sectarian cliques or cults that have sprung up everywhere. Like in Tiruvannamalai, there's all these different cliques based on different teachers, and they don't talk to each other. Huh? In fact, several of them have tried to recruit me. And when I said, no thanks, you know, I don't need another guru. I already have plenty, thank you, you know. Um, then they, don't, they just ghost me, they don't talk to me anymore. Or they actually get angry. One guy wanted me to join his, his group uh, based on some uh, Babaji from Nepal who advertises himself as a madman. And I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> I, but I don't criticize other teachers, especially in public. I do criticize their teachings, but not the teachers themselves. Because every teacher is a teacher because he has an audience. And he's speaking to those people on their level. So that's not something, that's not a relationship that I want to disturb or meddle with. But I can criticize their philosophy, their teachings or practices, how they view things. So anyway, I told this guy, oh, this is simply not my cup of tea. I didn't criticize, didn't say anything. But to this day, he won't speak to me. And every time I see him, he gives me angry looks. Uh, 
So this is sectarianism, and we want to avoid that. So even if you're already linked to another teacher, that's all right. You can participate here, just as long as you don't seek to impose your beliefs on others. That's the criterion. Uh, we want to be inclusive. We want to be understanding. We want to distribute the mother's compassion to all and everyone. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.